No one lied. Hey, y'all. So, we have no idea what we're doing here. It seems there's some new rules on YouTube. So, we're hoping this works. We're hoping this is archived. We're going to find out. So, um, it's funny. I've done a few one-minute things for cooking demonstrations, and I still have all my fingers, which is a plus. I never appreciated the TV chefs as much as the first time I tried to look into a camera and chop vegetables and come up with all my fingers and toes. So, we're going to see if I still remember how to do that. In this video, I'm going to do my very best to kind of talk you through how we make Wu Chi Pai Fong, uh, which is a soup using a black chicken, and uh, it roughly translates black chicken, white phoenix. The whole idea is that this is the soup that we use when somebody's had a baby, a surgery, they're recovering from a long illness, or really just to kind of supercharge and nourish our body when we're feeling depleted. So. There's not a set recipe, you can Google it, um, uh, but the reality is we use a lot of our tonic herbs. And in Chinese medicine, anytime that we build things up, we nourish things up, we want to make sure that we don't cause things to get stuck, stagnation. Uh, so we always do a little bit of invigoration. So there's, there's a little bit of invigorating herbs here. Uh, I'm going to say weird Chinese names if I remember the Latin names, or at least the common name, I'll use those as well. And uh, this might take a little while. We didn't pre-prep a whole lot of things, so you might have to watch me, uh, my chopping prowess and, and prep a little bit. So, <clears throat> of course, one of the odd things that we have to get is actually a black chicken, so I'm just gonna get this out of the way. And uh, these we get at the, let me get a little bit of the oh, juice off of there. So these are actually black chickens. They're called silkies, um, and they do have the head and the feet on there, they do come pre-plucked. Uh, and sometimes they got the, the gizzard and stuff in there, sometimes not. So this is just like making chicken soup. I don't actually chop the carcass up. Uh, all of it goes into the pot. If you're gonna eat it, it's a very strong flavor to actually eat the, the flesh from this. It's not wrong to eat it at all. Uh, but I hate to say it for Herb Day, and this we're making this for Herb Day for everybody to enjoy. Uh, I actually take the carcass out and I feed it to some of the critters here. Uh, so I don't like to waste the meat. But the head and feet is super important. This is about nourishing the essence, the jing of the body. And we say that the, the brain is the, the sea of marrow. And so really that's part of the jing. So Thank I could you. have this already on the stove top starting to heat up. But, you know, for the magic of TV... We're going to go ahead and just throw them in the pot, and uh, I am going to wash the uh, bird juice off of me, so pardon me while I clean up. Oh, that shows up pretty good on the computer. All mm -hmm. right. Thank you, thank, chicken. Thank you for your patience. And uh, so at this point, I have a lot of dried herbs I like to add to the mix. So I'm going to kind of talk through these a little bit. Um, yeah, where shall we start? Oh, let's start with the good stuff here. So this one here, we've got uh, Lianza, which is lotus seed, and the little brown one here is some sliced renshen, or ginseng. So this is actually the steamed ginseng. It's a little bit warmer uh, than the white ginseng, or certainly warmer than the American ginseng. That's a fair bit, and I'm going to end up making this very weak. This would be about the right amount. I probably have about 20 grams of the, uh, the white lotus seeds. These cook down nicely and have a nice toothy bite to them. We actually put these in our uh, eight treasure kanji we're going to do here in a little bit on a separate video. And the ren shen breaks down enough. Sometimes you end up with that in the soup. We're going to strain this out. Uh, so I'm going to dump all of that uh, ginseng and lotus seed. What do we got in here? Oops, there's a little bit more ginseng. Wait, wait, hold on a minute. This is Renee speaking. I want to say something about what Bob said. He just was saying that the ginseng was hot, and he doesn't mean that... It was hot in his hands. It wasn't cooked. It's its energetic action within the body and what it does. It warms things up. And so make sure that as he's telling you this is cold or this is hot. Uh, cool energetic He doesn't stuff. mean he ha you have to make it cold or you have to prepare it hot. She's right about all of that. So I believe this is some dry ginger. So dry ginger is a little bit different action in Chinese medicine than fresh ginger. So we're going to do a little bit of both. So this is a little bit of fresh ginger. And this is Ligustricum root, uh, Xuan Shang. So this is a nice blood mover. That's going to go into the pot. Um, this is Chen Pi. And this looks like Xu Duan. Xu Duan is teasel root, actually. Chen Pi is tangerine peel. Actually, the older it is, the better it is. It's one of the few herbs that we actually 
after we harvest it, after we dry it, we want it older, older, older. So is that mature tangerine it's, peel? It's a very mature. It, it, it is one of our elders. Okay. And so uh, this aids with digestion. If we talk about um, we talk about vitamin C and all of its anti-inflammatory benefits, we talk about the, the bioflavonoids. And so the real magic of citrus fruit isn't the yummy fruit. It's the peel and the white and the pith, all the really dark stuff. The teasel root, we say, strengthens the low back. Um, but in Western herbal medicine, we often talk about teasel root is um, specific for chronic Lyme disease, post, uh, post Lyme disease, when there's a lot of aches and pains associated with that. So we'll work on that a little bit. This is one of my personal favorites. I probably overuse uh, reishi mushroom, ling uh, jur, uh, Ganoderma lycidium. So this works on the heart, this works on the lungs. It's a nice drying. Uh, I find this just does amazing things for the immune system. So we're gonna throw that guy in there. Fu Ling, Poria mushroom. I love little curls. These are like little cigars. Um, so these help to uh, drain damp, trans, uh, to uh, transform phlegm, uh, calms the shen, as well as tonifies the spleen chi. So that's these little white curlies. Bob, do you pick that one over the other one that's in squares for a reason, or do you just like that one? I do. The squares usually have a little bit of the root uh, in it, and that's the uh, fu shen, which is greater emphasis on the calm the shen. So I don't want anybody to fall asleep in class tomorrow when we're doing all the lectures, so I want to make sure they stay awake and no dampness. So this one is actually, uh, we've got a little bit of the glue from a turtle shell, freshwater turtle shell, we say nourishes the essence, as well as a little uh, lu jiao jiao, which is deer antler glue. So we have a couple of each one of those. These are strongly nourishing to both the yang as well as the yin. And uh, that's the biggest he shou wu slice I've ever seen. So polygono multifluori, um, inappropriately sometimes called fo tea. This is a great blood tonic and uh, it's kind of a, we'd say an essence tonic. It helps to turn the hair black. You have to come to a lecture sometime, and I'll talk about when my mom, and 80 years old, her roots started to come back black because we had this in her tincture. Um, we've got a little uh, Romania, so this is Shengdi, and a little uh, Tianmen Dong. So this is the Tianmen Dong in here as well. It's been steamed. It makes it a little bit more digestible. Uh, it's the same herb, basically, as Shatavari. Um, and yummy asparagus. So lots of yin and blood tonics. And I have a question for you real quick because everybody's going to ask because yeah. they don't cook the way that you're cooking. You mean just throwing junk in there? Yep. Does it matter the quantities of these specifically or is it just what you're feeling or a handful or is there for real a recipe and you just don't follow it? <laughs> there is no recipe. Actually, there is. If you Google uh, Wu Chi Pai Fang, uh, itmonline.com uh, actually has a recipe for uh, Wu Chi Pai Fang. And uh, I, will, I follow some of that. I won't say I follow it specifically. Uh, I alter that a little bit. but As far as quantities. Quantities. I literally... A handful. Anybody who was at the clinic this afternoon, I literally decided how much of stuff I went by the handful. We're gonna end up making almost 10 gallons of soup with this. So that's actually dilute. If I had somebody who had just given birth, had lost a lot of blood, surgery, things like that, I would maybe use these same quantities, like almost a handful of each one, um, and maybe do it in two gallons of soup and freeze mm -hmm. some of it so that they could get a nice sustained uh, period of stuff. So all of the same stuff that's in here, we also have Bai Shao. Sorry, we didn't separate that out. We didn't Aww. think of doing the video yet. I did a but bad job. Bai Shao is the white peony uh, root. Um, and what else did I put I in there? We said Romania. This? We said ginseng. We said Lianza. So all of those goodies are in here. That's probably the bulk of it. So we're going to dump all of that into our pot. But then we got some surprises here as well. This is Shan Yao. So this is actually the Chinese wild yam and uh, just got this fresh from the Asian market. So we're going to add this up to get a little starch in there. And this is really slimy in my hand. So this is a nice fresh root. And I just like to peel this. You don't have to peel this. We did scrub all the vegetables that we're going to throw in here. 
And slimy in his hand is good because he wants that starchy. Yes. He so. wants that binding. So it's good. Let's. Look I'm gonna. At that. So on the recording for everybody who's watching it live, I'm gonna zoom in on that sticky, and it really is actually gross. Yeah. But that's what we want. We want the inside of our body coated and inflammation coated, and we want the the soup to be hearty and thick. And so that's why we want it that way. So Shen Yao helps with. Uh... Uh, loose stools, it's good for the spleen chi, i.e. the digestion, the energy of the body. But we're going to throw in whoop, some of that and some of that. I'm going to wash my hands because I'm going to cut myself. If it I sticks keep those things together. Hands. Whoa, that's Oh, gross. <laughs> I don't like slimy. Oh, this is extra snotty. Mm -hmm. Something Bob knows a lot about. That's right. Extra snotty. So then... Uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, lotus root. So this is actually uh, grows in the water in usually fairly still water. We'll find this in a raging river. And this is, we put the seeds of this in here. Mm -hmm. So this is just using a different part of the plant. So we find that different parts of the plant have different actions. So um, this is also considered a tonic. All of the... Uh, this nourishes the kidney. Again, you don't have to peel this. I prefer it being peeled, cutting the ends off because this did grow in some stagnant pond somewhere. So I want that fairly. For all of you that are familiar with North Florida, up going up towards Payne's Prairie, there's these um, retaining ditches basically, and there's lotus all in there. And every time I see them blooming, I think about hey, is that where that root comes from? Is it in that space? But it's all kind of like a drainage ditch, like a runoff. You can see them every year blooming, and that's where you would get it from. And if you're ever lucky enough to be one of our senior uh, Western herb students, or actually Chinese herb students do get to go if they want, um, we have the yellow pond uh, lily. lily that grows here. That It's interesting. We find that the root looks the same when we cut it. It has the segmentation. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, people actually use that in very similar ways and uh, so I would say this is a more classical one and the and reason Bob said that was because we take you out into the water to right, find sorry. it sorry Hillsborough you, River we yeah, find this everywhere we go we go wild harvesting and that's one of the plants we find oh, look. see that's what it looks like super interesting Bob so, hold it still for a minute so I can zoom in oh so beautiful nature so is this wonderful this is normal so these uh, uh, little tributaries think about doctrine of signatures when mm. something looks like something what it used for so this might be uh, beneficial for the lung mm -hmm. we could see that as clear capillaries and, and blood vessels um, we're going to throw that in there so remember i said uh ginger that uh we want to add a little fresh ginger that's for aiding digestion and nausea if you don't know it you don't have to skin ginger you can actually leave that on this is uh called shenjiang in uh, chinese medicine the peel is considered hotter than the ginseng, uh, the ginger root itself. So the peel is called uh, shengjiang uh, pea or peel. But if you don't want to leave the peel on, spoons were great for peeling a uh, ginger root because ginger roots is all knobby and hard to get in there. So I like to scrape it down a little bit. So just using a regular spoon and uh, getting the big chunks off. Uh, you know, it's been sitting in the store for a day or two. This is really good ginger. I can smell just the sweet, um, aromatic, the, the um, scent is just coming across. I, it's funny. I love ginger. Like, I would have pounds of ginger in every meal I ever eat. Renee hates ginger. So guess what? She's got heat. I got cold. So this is great for warming me up, warming my digestion, and really just helps me have a happy, happy digestion. In the in the jungles of Ecuador, the shamans will spit ginger on you to keep the spirit of the jungle in your space elevated, to keep your vibration high and elevated. So we'll be ready to go to the jungle after this meal. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to do a fine dice. This is going into soup, and so it's just going to cook all up. I'm fanatical about washing my hands, so pardon me whilst we have those brief Very interludes. Nice. And uh, What's next? make sure my plates, sorry for those of you who think that's uh, uh, so garlic, who <laughs> doesn't like garlic. Um, so if you don't know it, there's a really fun way to uh, 
you know, you could sit there and peel garlic all day long. It's a lot of work. So I'm going to try the old school method, which is way fun. This makes the peeling a lot better. Garlic obviously kills all things. I think it just tastes good. Bob, you just made me think of something that they might need to know. What's that? Is it traditional for you to eat all the pieces that are in there or just to have broth? So you can do it either way. So um, does that mean you could leave the peels on these if you wanted to? Um, yeah, you probably could. Mm -hmm. Never thought about that. Um, I do like to get it exposed to some uh, air. And mm -hmm. it gets a little bit of a chemical change. You know, when we do like the garlic nasal wash. Yeah. That we like that 10 minutes of exposure to air to ensure that... Uh, we get that chemical change that really helps with that antimicrobial and less burny mm -hmm. uh, aspect of it. What Bob's referring to is if you let the garlic sit crushed into the air or anything in that family of plants, it will have a one molecule change that will make it so that people who generally get a gut upset or digestion upset from it will not. It will lessen it a little bit, but the antimicrobial and the effect of the garlic and the flavor is still very present. So it's something to to do is to go ahead and prep that ahead of time for a stir fry if you think it's going to bother someone's tummy. So, you know, this whole black chicken, white phoenix thing is very classical Chinese dish and uh, very normal. Um, I've actually used this. Uh, we had one of the practitioners in our clinic uh, after having a baby. I actually uh, brought this to her, really, literally turned her around within hours. But I would say uh, this is similar in idea to what we uh, do more here in the West, which is bone soup. So bone soup, we oftentimes are just throwing vegetables in there and things like that, some mushrooms. And there's certainly, you know, Renee and I have some really powerful things. We use bone soup for cancer patients and post chemo and things like that. Um, it would be very appropriate to use a very similar set of herbs and do it with bone broth. The idea of using the um, the black chicken is the significance of using that whole animal. The same reason we use the marrow bones is because that is considered the essence or the jing of the body. Um, so it's, it's really the same thing. It's just that it was easier to get chickens than it was to kill a cow. Uh, and a little bit easier on the digestion, I think, to, to eat that. So I'm just going to chop up a little onion here. I think that, uh, Besides having some nice antimicrobial properties to it, I think it makes the soup taste nice. People are really apprehensive when I have this out at Herb Day. By the way, if I didn't say it, Herb Day is tomorrow. Um, from 10 to 4, 2520 Central Avenue. Uh, 20 vendors, two different musical acts, lectures, and two different tents the entire time. And every single one of the vendors has something going on with herbs. And... Everything from great herbal medicine from some of our students and some of the other herbalists in our community to uh, herbal clothing to uh, lots of plants. We've got, I think, three plant vendors out there this time. Ourselves and Willow, of course. Um, and we've got a special treat coming up this year. We've, we've decided to start our, our herbal community. has been growing so much in the last few years you know, with the increase in, in uh, participants in the herbal program by, you know, Renee adding in the Western herbs and teaching more and more out in our community. There's just, there's herbalists everywhere and it's wonderful and there's an appreciation and understanding of the importance of looking at a, some sort of a diagnostic technique a uh, formulation appropriate for the individual that there's no one size fits all so we thought it was important to start to recognize the other herbalists in our community uh, so this is going to be the first year and this is the 14th annual mm -hmm. uh, herb day celebration this is a national event that goes on every year for 14 years um, and it was a an attempt to bring herbal information and a better awareness for herbal medicine to the general public. Ah, oh, thank you. Water, good. Um, and a number of our national organizations, the um, United Plant Savers, the American Herbalist Guild, uh, it, the um, American Botanical Council, American Herbal Products Association, and so many other of the important 
for-profit and non-profit organizations out there that are in that alternative health and in particularly in the herbal realm. And so the whole idea is, was that after they got the national decree 14 years ago, that everybody create their own idea of Herb Day. And when I found out about this through the American Herbalist Guild, I just saw this wonderful opportunity and I never wanted it to end. So what I did was I immediately uh, set it up and we started doing these events and inviting all of the different uh, herbalists in our community and advertising it. So we wanted to take it a step further and start to recognize folks. So this year we're going to actually, uh, we've got a plaque, we're going to issue an award uh, for the, herbal, the Herbalist of the Year in the Tampa Bay area and uh, make sure that we, we acknowledge, in this case, and I'm not going to say who it is, it's a surprise for all of y'all, he knows it. Um, I didn't even know but, we were doing it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's somebody who's been in our community probably for 30 years as an educator, uh, as well as working as a clinician and coming to people's homes and helping them out. And I think it's really important that, you know, so many people work behind the scenes making things happen. And there's so many people who dedicate every spare moment of their, of their life to making sure that the word is being spread, the education is getting out there. So enough of that. Come to Herb Day. Anything it's awesome. left? So we got a little Shanya. You know what? I got a little daikon. Okay, that's a big daikon. Let's throw some daikon in. Let's throw some daikon in. What's your favorite thing to throw into a soup, okay? Um, this is chicken soup, is really gar what we're doing. Garlic with. and rosemary really is something that I um, you shoot know, for. In, rosemary would be yeah. great in here. Maybe we'll add some rosemary when we reheat it tomorrow. We might go ahead and add some rosemary. When we're making this for moms that, even though it has invigoration, moms that have had babies, Ooh. or when we're making this for um, our cancer clients, they tend to have a little brain fog. And so that's helpful. Yeah. Like, it's a helpful thing, and it's a good antimicrobial. I, I'm going to steal both Shakespeare and Renee saying mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, rosemary is for remembering. Mm -hmm. So um, really all I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with water, bring it to a boil, and reduce it for a simmer. I'm going to cook it as long as humanly possible. So this is going to get cooked probably for about three or four hours. And, uh, and then tomorrow we'll strain nice. all of this goodness out. And uh, dilute it down a little bit because we got a lot. We're expecting close to a thousand people to come to Herb Day tomorrow, which may be our biggest crowd ever. The weather looks like it's going to be perfect. I'm taking the doors off the hinges so there is no hindrance for people to explore all the goodness that we got coming on. So, if any of you are in the Tampa Bay area, come see us tomorrow. And um, what we're going to do, we're going to have vendors all the way in the back. So, come in, uh, park on First Avenue, North or South, because it's probably not going to be a lot of parking on Central. Free parking. Yep. Free parking everywhere around there. And make sure that you uh, come inside and we've got right on through the classroom. We've got vendors. We've got vendors and more plants out back. And then we even got vendors in the backpack. If you haven't been in there, we've got a pond with fish and we've got pond plants back there. All kinds of cool Plants stuff. for sale. So, you know. Herb Day t-shirts. Ooh, that's right. we got Herb Day t-shirts. I should have had that on. Mm -hmm. We'll have our Herb Day t-shirts on uh, tomorrow. So, Wuchi Bai Fong, uh, Black Chicken White Phoenix Soup. This is something that is both a longevity, nourishing, and uh, even considered somewhat of a beautification thing. That it's really just transforming uh, that, that chicken into this rising up, uh, reborn phoenix. Um, so don't feel like you have to wait till you're really sick to enjoy this. Don't hyper-focus on the herbs that I used. I'm sure we could come up with a version that's using Western herbs. We could put in tons of mushrooms to work on an immunity system. But usually we're kind of focusing on blood. Uh, if you're in Chinese medicine, more yin type of nourishing, kidney essence kind of idea. And you don't need a lot. We're not going to drink a big bowl of this. We're actually going to just drink a cup or two and maybe once a day, twice a day. So this can be frozen, reused, and reheated, uh, and it's so powerful. Literally, I'll be running like, around like a maniac tomorrow. I'm up at 4.30 tomorrow morning making some uh, bitter melon stir fry. I'll be at the clinic probably at 7 a.m. getting everything set up, and somehow I keep running until five. This is the stuff that keeps me going. So I hope to see you soon. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because we want to make sure that you find out about every great video that we're putting out on YouTube. We're working hard to try to hit that magical thousand subscribers. Um, you know, we don't get any spam from it. And, uh, you know, ultimately, yeah, we make a few bucks so that we can spend more time teaching you guys. And if you hit subscribe, you get alerted every time we do an herb walk or put anything new up. Yep, that's it. 
So um, I'm going to actually, we're going to end this video and in about 10 minutes, I'm going to start the next video. It's a really short one. I'm going to make a, a, a jellyfish salad and it takes a little while to rinse it. So I'm going to try to rinse a little bit of it first, maybe chop up a little bit of the cabbage so you don't have to sit there while I'm endlessly chopping away a little. I'm a pretty exciting choppy person. Um, <laughs> And uh, that may be the only thing we make tonight. I, I might make a little mung beans and put on another pot of rice. Uh, but we... maybe we'll film in the morning, morning at 4.30. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get up. <laughs> Thank you so much for mm -hmm. hanging out with us. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to bed by 10 o'clock like I hope to. I definitely have a little bit more prep time. So as soon as you get a chance, hit one of the uh, Asian markets near you for uh, a frozen black chicken. Um, or make sure, you know, you don't have access to that if you're in the Midwest somewhere where there's not a lot of Asian markets, you know, make sure that you use a creativity. I would say marrow bones would work just as well in a very similar way or a, um, not a wild chicken, but a free ranging, uh, pasture raised chicken. With all the parts. Work. We don't want a lot of fat with this. And you may have noticed that that silky, that, that black chicken was, um, really lean there was no extra fat in there so there'll be almost no oil or grease that's associated with this the uh if you didn't notice that black skin black beak black toes black bones and it has black feathers it's actually a beautiful bird our neighbor actually has a silky and uh, we've had silkies we've raised in the past here so all right bye. i'll let you all go bye see you next time